We always heard the rumors that Amazon would make a smartphone, and this summer that became reality, and as a result, we have the Amazon Fire Phone. How's it going, guys? Alex with iTech Triad, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my full review, my full experience in using the Amazon Fire Phone. So in this review, I'm going to tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like about the Fire Phone. I'm also going to state whether it's worth picking up if you're considering purchasing one. But first, let's talk about hardware. Now, as it comes to hardware with the Fire Phone, it was kind of a love-hate relationship. I kind of loved it for the fact that even though it was bulky and heavy, it just kind of felt good to hold in the hands. But then I also hated the fact that it was heavy and bulky, if that makes any sense. I also didn't like the glass on the back, though it looks really nice and though it feels nice, this was a conclusion I kind of drew towards the end, and that's the fact that it's a fingerprint magnet. I found myself always cleaning it, and also I got plenty of scratches on the back. So that's what I found to be the case with the review unit, and again, it's a love-hate relationship and it kind of really depends on the user on whether they'll like or hate the hardware. Since we received this review unit directly from Amazon, it had AT&T service and everything was great as it comes to the actual service on the device. Everything got interesting though as it comes to the software and overall user experience. Of course, this phone is running Amazon Fire OS and I've got to be honest, it was a new experience and it wasn't one I liked. And I'm always open to trying new things. It's something I've always expressed in technology and in life in general. And though this was a new experience for me, there were actually many things, like I mentioned before, that I did not like. Let me get into the first. The first was the lack of Google applications. Now, I'm pretty heavily invested in iOS ecosystem, Apple's ecosystem, and Google's ecosystem. Coming over to the Fire Phone was difficult. Now, I found myself constantly saying, man, I wish I had Hangouts, I wish I had Google Drive, and I didn't. Now, Amazon does not have the same ecosystem as Google, so using this was just so difficult not being able to have my Google applications. The next thing that I didn't like about using this phone was just the experience in general in the OS. I felt like I was holding a huge advertisement in my hands. For example, when I was on the carousel, being that my home screen, it was constantly suggesting different apps that I should purchase or download. And yes, I get it the Amazon Fire Phone, hence why they called it the Amazon Fire Phone, was meant for people to download, buy things from Amazon, but there's a certain limit. Now I feel that this should have been a little more subtle in suggesting that I buy or purchase or download certain products or applications. Because at the end of the day, our phones are meant to help us progress in life, help us be productive and help us get things done, not waste more money. So I would like for Amazon, if they decide to make another Fire Phone, to kind of work on that. Another thing I didn't like was there was constant lag in this phone. I would be typing a message and I'd have to wait for the phone to actually catch up in the message I was typing. When I'd be scrolling through the carousel, it would just be very laggy and it just made the overall experience in using this phone more of a pain than an actual pleasure. Yet another thing I did not like about the Fire Phone was the virtual assistant. It pretty much had zero functionality. I would ask it what the weather was like and it had no response. I asked it what the time in a certain area was, it had no response. I was actually very surprised, especially in light of the fact that we heard the announcement of Amazon Echo, that the virtual assistant had pretty much zero functionality. Of course we know in the future that will change. But as of now, I was actually rather surprised. Don't get me wrong though, Amazon did deliver in one area, and that's the camera. It had a 13 megapixel camera, which actually kind of surprised me, but I guess at the end of the day, of course, they did need a good camera in order to use Firefly and for it to work, at least when it did. So the Amazon Fire Phone had its cons, many of them, and it had some pros. At the end of the day though, a good camera and decent hardware doesn't justify signing a two-year contract for this phone. Yes, there's some good concepts to it that could possibly end up working and this might be the phone for those of you who are die-hard Amazon shoppers. But again, I do not suggest to anyone to purchase this phone even for 99 cents on contract or even for $200 off contract. It just for me isn't worth it and I really feel that Amazon has a lot to work on. Anyway guys, again, I'm Alex with iTech Triad, and this has been our full review of the Amazon Fire Phone. 
A huge thanks to Amazon for sending this out to review. Be sure to give them and us a thumbs up down below, and we'll see you guys in our next iTech Triad video.